All right, everybody. So we're moving into Earth history. Um, the first lesson was on the rock cycle. Now we're moving into the layers of the Earth and plate tectonics. So the Earth is divided into three main layers. There's the core, and the core is divided into the inner core and the outer core. The inner core is solid, and the outer core is molten rock, so like really hot rock that's not quite a liquid and not quite a solid. And then the mantle, which is the middle layer and is divided into the upper and lower mantle. And then finally the crust, which is the layer that we Here's a great diagram showing you the inner core, outer core, mantle, and crust. The uppermost part of the mantle and the crust. So see the crust is the very, very thin, thin, thin part. And the up, that part that we live on and the part right below it, the upper part of the mantle, is called the lithosphere. Um, the lithosphere is the layer of rock on Earth, and the makes the lithosphere is responsible for um, not responsible for, but is what we talk about when we're talking about continental drift. So continental drift started with a hypothesis, and a hypothesis, remember, is an educated guess about what has happened over time with the land on Earth. Um, the continents, the continental drift hypothesis states that the continents were once joined together to form one large supercontinent, which was referred to as Pangaea. And that picture you see is a picture of what the continents might have looked like at one point in Earth. At one point in Earth. All right, so if you look at this diagram, this is really cool. The top left, it shows you uh, 200 million years ago what it might have looked like. The top right, 130 million years ago. The bottom right, 70 million years ago, and then today. So this is reversing back in time 200 million years ago to show you that they were once all joined, and then over time they have spread out, and they are moving some, some towards each other and some away from each other. And if you look at the arrows, you can see which direction that they're moving. This is very similar to the last diagram, except for it includes a little bit of the future. So you have 200 million years ago at the top, then you have today in the middle, and then 50 million years from now. And if you look at it, you can see um, in certain parts there's bigger gaps, and in certain parts it's more squished together. Look at the United States and look what's happened to Florida and the Gulf of Mexico and that whole area. It's pretty cool to look at. All right, so it's a hypothesis, and then there's several pieces of evidence for this hypothesis. Hypothesis, and this these pieces of evidence come together to form the plate tectonics theory. So the first piece of evidence is that there's a continental puzzle. All the continents appear to fit together because of the shape of the coastlines. So even though they're not all together, if you were to try and put them all together, a lot of their coastlines, even though they've been eroded away over time, still match up and fit together. Second piece of evidence is matching fossils. So when you take, for example, South America and Africa and match them up, on both coastlines that you would match them up on, there are very, very similar fossils that aren't found anywhere else in the world. Um, the one that's most popular is the Mesosaur fossil. Okay, so if you took this diagram shows you very clearly that if you put South America and Africa together, you will find that Mesosaurus fossil on both of those coastlines. Rock types and structures are another example of piece of evidence for continental drift. So there are matching rock types and mountain belts on the coastlines when you match up the continents together. There are also ancient climates or they're also proof of ancient climates when you put the coastlines together. So there's certain plants that can only be found or only grow in specific climates. So for example, um, places right now that are really, really cold, there are, um, there have been fossils found of plants that have only existed in tropical climates, which tells you that that land mass had to have been somewhere warm in order for that fossil to be found there. Um, this one shows you rocks, so when you match up South America and Africa, you can see that the, the light pink match up and the dark pink match up. Those are two different 
examples of two different rock types. This one is on climates, so when you match up all the continents like this, you can see all the blue had glaciers. You can see all the orange, brownish color is desert, and all the green are tropics. And we know now that not all of these places have tropical climates, but we know that tropical plants are found there, even though their current climate is not true. Their current climate may not be a desert. So the plate tectonics theory states that the lithosphere, remember that crust and upper mantle, is divided into seven major plates and six smaller ones that are constantly moving and changing shape. The plates are moving because of the unequal heat that the unequal heat distribution. There's not the same amount of heat all over Earth, which makes the plates move. Um, this is a very busy diagram that shows you um, the plate movement. So if you look at the key in the bottom left, you see the, the squiggly line is divergent boundaries. So that's where plates are moving apart. Everywhere else, the plates are moving together. And when plates move together, there are often subduction zones. So when one plate is heavier than the other, it sinks underneath the one that is lighter. And then that's where mountains are created, or mountain belts and volcanoes, when you have a subduction zone. Sometimes when two plates come together, when they're two continental plates, push up into mountains. So before we get into that, we need to talk a little bit about plate motion and how it's caused. So plate motion is actually caused by convection currents. So convection, remember, is um, it happens because of density differences which happen as a result of temperature differences. So the easiest way to understand this is by looking at a pot of boiling water. Um, eighth graders, you, those of you who have had the seventh grade science cycle, uh, we did a lot of density stuff when we did weather. So this could be review for you. If not, it's easy to understand if you look at the pot. So if you look at where the flame is, that's where the water is the hottest and hot things rise. So the hot water is rising, and as you move away from the flame, the water is cooler, and cold things are heavier because the water molecules, or the molecules in cold water are packed in tighter, so they make it heavier and sink. So that, that rising and sinking, rising and sinking, makes little currents, which makes the bubbles in a boiling pot of water. And the same thing happens with the molten rock inside of earth it actually rises and sinks which causes these currents which causes movement which results in the plate of earth so this diagram is really good it shows you um, the orange part which is the molten part the part that is not quite liquid but it's not quite solid and as the molten rock is heated it rises because it's less dense because warmer things are less dense and then as it gets up top towards the crust it cools because it becomes more dense and sinks and this change in temperature and density causes the current so all major interactions among plates happen along their boundaries and there's right here in the very very middle where you have the orange is the youngest seafloor because it was just formed as you move far away to either the left or the right side of this diagram, the seafloor is much, 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 much older because it's farthest away from where that new hot, hot mold. <clears throat> All right, this one is showing you very similar thing, only just in a different way. So you have the magma coming up in the middle. You have two plates pulling apart. So it's really, really thin in the middle and it is cooling into new rock and as you move farther apart towards the continents that blue part the ocean as you move farther apart to the left and to the right you actually have older seafloor the second kind of plate boundary though they are called convergent boundaries so when two things come together they are converging together or moving together and crust is destroyed um, doesn't mean it, it goes away, it just means it's really changing shape. Um, when you have two pieces of land coming together, they make mountains. And when you have a piece of land, a, a plate that's got land on it, and a plate that is an oceanic plate, plate that has water, they one goes under the other, 
the oceanic plate is heavier than the land plate and it sinks like this diagram shows. So when one plate sinks, it's going to go deep enough to where it hits lava or molten rock that's really, really hot and it's going to burn the land up. That actually makes not, not, I'm sorry, not the land, it's going to burn the plate up, which actually makes volcanoes. And so you can see that the volcanoes in this diagram are on the land, but it's at a border, a boundary with an oceanic plate and a continental plate. So subduction, again, is when the heavier plate sinks below the less dense plate and it melts. So you see this one sinking down under, it gets down so deep to where it's hot, and it burns up the plate. The molten plate now is going to rise because hot things rise and it's going to basically carve out a path up to the top which in this case is in a mountain which makes a volcano. All right the next and last kind of plate boundaries are called transform boundaries. Um, these are when two plates are going to slide past one another and they don't do it very nicely. They grind past each other and it's very um, rough and bumpy and that's what makes earthquakes happen. This doesn't destroy or create crust. They're just moving 